Uh, we move on to the next topic, and that is now dealing with the obliques. And we have Dr. Jitendra Jathani from Baroda to tell how we manage the obliques, the inferior obliques particularly. So oblique and inferior, but they are on top because next to the horizontal recession resections, it's the inferior obliques that we have to handle. Dr. Jathani. Everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, sir. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Sharma, sir, for giving me the opportunity to be part of his instruction course. Uh, I have no financial disclosure. So uh, we, will, uh, we will move on to uh, the indications for uh, intraoblique surgery. Basically, the indication is whenever it overacts uh, and when there is an overaction, we have to uh, do a weakening procedure. But essentially, the indications would be primary intraoblique overaction. There can be bilateral essential overactions with V pattern, unilateral essential overactions combined with horizontal deviations and a significant hyperdeviation in primary position, uh, DVD uh, associated with uh, intraoblique overactions, secondary intraoblique overactions in supraoblique muscle palsy, uh, contralateral synergistic in superrectus uh, palsy. So this will, uh, in these patients, this will not be a primary surgery of choice but uh, may be done when all the options are there, are done. And in DEP, the contralateral eye, again, it won't be the primary surgery of choice. We may have to do a uh, NAPS procedure. And duance also, if, uh, you know, if we are sure that it is because of intraoblique overaction, only then we have to touch the intraoblique. Uh, otherwise, uh, normally the upshoots and downshoots in DRS will be because of the tight lateral rectus and not because of the intraoblique. So whenever there is an overaction, we have to uh, go ahead and uh, weaken the intraoblique. We will see what are the different surgeries and uh, when we can do particular procedures. Uh, in V-pattern strabismus, without intraoblique overactions, uh, you uh, do not have to think of touching intraoblique. And uh, uh, when there is an apparent overaction, uh, but there is no intraoblique overaction, you can leave intraoblique. Uh, we should see the uh, intraoblique uh, surgical anatomy. So it is the, it is from origin, it is inclined posterior laterally. It has a large wide nine millimeter incision. It is uh, a 10 millimeter posterior to the inferior edge of lateral rectus recession. So not, uh, I mean, uh, slightly posterior, but not very difficult to find. And posteriorly it extends up to five millimeters. So it is very close to the optic nerve. So we should always be very cautious when we are dissecting the posterior part of intraoblique, especially when we are uh, trying to cut the intraoblique and uh, detaching it from its insertion. The maximum muscle length available for recession is 12 millimeters. So you cannot uh, by any way uh, try and do a larger recession than 12 millimeters. And that is restricted by the later margin of uh, inferior rectus. So these are, uh, you know, when uh, intraoblique, uh, intraoblique surgery is quite forgiving and that is why there are so many types of surgeries which have been described. Uh, different surgeries have different effects because intraoblique works as a uh, both as an elevator a abductor and as a uh, extorter. That is the reason we have to when we operate we have to see two axes horizontal and vertical. So these are all the, uh, the distances which have been taken from inferior rectus and lateral rectus. So it will be posterior to lateral rectus, inferior to lateral rectus, or it could be inferior to inferior rectus and lateral to inferior rectus. So Fink, uh, Fink surgery will give eight millimeter effect. Classic Fink is six millimeter posterior to lateral rectus, six millimeter inferior. Apton call will give 12 millimeter effect. Parks, so these are the points which they have described where you can place the anterior insertion of infraoblique. So this is, uh, this will be the uh, enter positioning. This will be mem center positioning, which is anterior to uh, the inferior rectus insertion. So the peculiarity of inferior oblique uh, peculiarities are that uh, uh, there is uh, always a diversity on which technique to follow. There, there may be unpredictable undercorrections, but uh, overall it's uh, quite a forgiving muscle and uh, there are no, uh, you cannot uh, do large, I mean, it is difficult to do a large uh, inferior oblique uh, recession, but there is uh, one important point. Uh, whenever you do a unilateral or a bilateral enter positioning, there can be, there is a chance of anti-elevation syndrome. And basically it is, uh, we should be knowing this when we are embarking on doing an enter positioning surgery of infraoblique. It is a co-contraction syndrome and an outcome of, uh, adverse outcome of enterization. So what happens in enterization when you, when you put the muscle anterior to the equator, very close to the inferior rectus, it acts as a depressor. And in abduction, it acts as a depressor and superior rectus is acting as an elevator. So it is a co-contraction syndrome and that induces the apparent overaction of other eye uh, elevation and adduction. So that induces a reduced palpebral fissure width and a y, y pattern. So this is, uh, okay, so this is uh, what I do. And uh, so we will start with some of the surgeries. Selection of technique is based on, for me, it is based on 
certain things like if the, how much is the overaction if it is slight very small i would uh, go for a finks recession when there is a slight overaction bilateral symmetric overaction and a v pattern we can do a finks recession and if it is a moderate overaction and there is a v pattern we can do a graded recession we will see what is the graded recession but this is uh, this is the intra oblique finks recession you go 6 mm uh, posterior and 6 mm inferior to lateral rectus so that is uh, classic finks you can augment it by going 6 mm posterior and 8 mm 8 mm posterior and 6 mm inferior and that gives a recession further recession of 2 mm which is around 10 mm so this is a finks recession there is a bunching of muscle uh, the posterior end is being tied only 3 mm posterior to the anterior end yeah, we can it's almost true this is a okay we'll start and <coughs> this is a graded recession of uh, apt and call in this particular thing we have uh, recessed 4.4 mm and 2.4 mm temporal to inferior rectus so this is the inferior rectus and this would give a recession of uh, 10 mm but this is a pure recession there is no anterior positioning effect in uh, graded recession of apt and call so he has graded recessions in which you don't have a uh, anterior positioning effect so that is from inferior rectus and uh, next surgery is uh, uh, modified iliac nankin in which we we do the surgery when there is a severe overaction and there is a large hyper in primary position this would give a recession as well as uh, effect of anterior positioning also so you separate the muscle tie the sutures and then uh, this is just to tenons so we hook the inferior rectus and we we pass the suture close to inferior rectus and the second suture is in the line of inferior rectus so it is the insertion the new insertion is parallel to the edge of inferior rectus the temporal border of uh, inferior rectus and then there is a uh, parks recession which is uh, which gives a uh, which gives a recession effect of uh, 10 mm and also gives a small uh, uh, anterior positioning effect also the parks recession is 3 mm inferior to inferior rectus and 2 mm temporal to inferior rectus on its temporal border so if there is a small hyper in primary position and a uh, uh, overaction is large we go for uh, parks recession just one more slide sir so this is uh, we can go a little quickly yeah, so we go 3 mm inferior and 2 mm temporal to uh, the inferior rectus which is the parks point most important thing is we have to bunch the muscle when we are tying it uh, at the desired insertion we have to bunch the muscle otherwise there are chances of uh, enterization uh, otherwise there are chances of anti elevation syndrome and this is the this is the true enterization with bunching and the upper slide shows uh, anterior nasal transposition which is again a very good surgery when you want uh, severe weakening of intra oblique and uh, this particular surgery would uh, not would also uh, you can escape the Uh, anti elevation syndrome because you're tying the new insertion nasal to the inferior rectus so that will cause some amount of entorsion and also that will prevent the anti elevation syndrome so this is enterization and we are trying to bunch the muscle this is done when there is severe uh, overaction plus 4 and there is a large uh, prior, large hyper in primary position in dvd also it is quite useful because you want to do a bilateral uh, anterior positioning of the intra oblique yeah that will be all thank you thank you dr jitendra i think the